Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at the Floating Item Showcase, another one of the widgets from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium plugin. With this widget, you can create complex-looking presentations that place an image or text on top of other background scrolling images. This is an element heavy on the visuals, so it's perfect for grabbing your visitors' attention quickly and thoroughly. The first example of the floating item showcases use is a preview of a homepage from the key theme. It's in image form and there's a link you can use to take a closer look at it if you want. But we'll also be exploring it together as it is the design we'll be recreating in this tutorial. Underneath that we have another example, also in image form but static. And here we can see some additional information on the widget. Still, you'll get to see all that in the tutorial, so let's get started. Head over to the back end. In the Elementor sidebar, search for Floating Item Showcase. There it is. Drag it over to the right. OK. This is what the widget looks like by default. We have two items. Both contain a placeholder image and some dummy text. Now, I mentioned at the start that you can overlay an image or some text. Well, if you opt for text, you'll be using this option, Overlay Title. Anything you type in here, for example, Title, will appear on the page as the topmost layer of the showcase, or its floating item to be more accurate. Also, with the text overlay, there will be some style options that you simply won't need with the image. Let me briefly show you what those are. So, in the Style tab, you'll have the Overlay Title tag, which you can use to change the HTML tag for that bit of text. You can use any of these in the dropdown. Then there's the Overlay Title Color. It has this user-friendly color picker, so it's extremely easy to change the color to whatever you like. Following that, we have the Overlay Title Typography settings. They include things like the font family for the text, the font size, then the font weight, with this exhaustive dropdown, the option to transform the text to, for example, uppercase or lowercase. The style option for turning the text italic, if that's something you're interested in. Then the decoration option for adding a line over, under or through the text. Finally, there are the three options for adjusting typography spacing. The line height, letter spacing and word spacing options. OK, so that's the bundle of options you get under typography. Then after that, you can adjust the padding for your text or image. This option works on either one and it lets you increase or decrease the amount of space on the left and right side simultaneously. Given that my text is too short to properly show any addition of or reduction in space, there's little point in me making any changes now. I'll show you this option later when we have the image as an overlay. So, those were some of the things you can do with the text if you opt for it as the showcase overlay. I'm going to slowly start customizing my element, including switching the overlay to image. But we'll also have some item text we'll be looking at after that. OK, for all that, we need to return to the content tab. And now I'll erase the example overlay title that I set so that we could see the options for it. And then I'll switch the enable image overlay option to yes. There we go. Now, I've gotten a new option where I can select my overlay image. I already added the one I want to my media library. There it is. Insert media. And the image is within the showcase placed under the item images. You can change that using this option. Overlay title slash image position. Right now, it's set to back, which puts it underneath the other images, so they get to play the overlay. If I switch it to front, the image will be laid over the rest of the showcase content. And then, if I had more items, this image would stay on top of everything even if I scroll. This is the look I'll be using. However, I promised we'd look at the item text as well, and that's much easier to do when the items are on top of this image rather than the other way around, so I'll temporarily set it to be in the back. OK, so this is the item text, and we'll be taking a look at the options for it now. Fair warning, I don't plan on using this text either, but I do want to cover the options you have for it. Alright, you will find the item text when you open an item. And here you'll have the following fields. Item title, for replacing this text. And item subtitle, for replacing this text. 
Underneath these, you'll see the item image field. By clicking on it, we can select a new image to replace the dummy default one. I'll use this one. Insert. Now that I have this, I can show you the item text style settings as any changes I make will be easier to see with this darker image. So let's go to the style tab. In here, you'll see this item style section. These options will help you style the text within the items. So for starters, you can pick the item layout. The default is info on hover, which has the text showing when we hover over an image. Then there is info below, so the text is displayed under the images, no need for visitors to hover. Also, with info below, you get this additional option, image grayscale. If we switch it to yes, then the image will become black and white, and it will show its original colors only when we hover over it. So this is an effect you can have when you no longer have the text appearing on hover with a color overlay. And this option is also accessible with the third item style setting, the info follow. With this one, the text appears on hover, but it's contained in a floating box. So with this setting, you get another three options. One is the info follow background color. It lets you change the fill color of the floating box. Another option is to enable the info follow text blend mode, which makes the box transparent but with a filter. So you can see the image but in negative. I'll disable it. And the last option is info follow max width. You can use it to adjust the width of the floating box. If I increase, okay, this is pretty similar to the default size. Let me set something smaller. And now if we look, the box is limited to the width of 74 pixels. Okay. I'll clear this. As for the option that started all this, the item layout, I'll set it to info below. There we go. Now the text is constantly visible and we can go over the options for styling it. Those include the title tag, where we can pick any of the H tags or even the P tag for the item title. Just to be clear, this is the item title, not to be confused with the overlay title. Then we have the title color with this familiar color picker. And alongside them, we have the title typography. Hopefully you recognize the options here. They are identical to the ones we saw under overlay title typography. So there shouldn't be any need to go over them again. Next, we have a similar set of options, this time for the subtitle. There's the subtitle tag, and changing the setting will affect this text here. Then there's the subtitle color for changing the color of that text. And finally, the subtitle typography offers the same collection of options as the title typography. Okay. Then, over in the spacing item style section, we have the subtitle margin bottom. We can use this option to separate the subtitle and the title bit, just like we can use the image margin bottom option to separate the image from the subtitle text by creating this gap. Alright, I'll clear both of these. With that, we covered all the relevant options for the item stacks. Now, as I don't plan on using the text, I'll go back to the item style section so I can switch the layout to info on hover. That way, I can simply erase the placeholder text without worrying if its absence will affect the spacing in the floating item showcase as a whole. So, going back to the content tab, I'm going to get on with customizing my showcase. The first thing I'll do is switch the overlay image position to front. Okay. Then, in the item settings, I can start erasing the placeholder text for the title and subtitle. There. The image stays, it's part of the design I'm working toward. In the item link field, I'll simply add a hashtag. It's a placeholder that will make the item look clickable. But if you want to add a link, you should make sure to enter a proper URL here. Then we have the item width option. It lets us set how wide our image will be, and it will keep its proportions whether you increase or decrease it. I'm going to put 317 pixels for this. We also have the item top offset option. By adjusting the value here, we set how much space there will be above the image. I'll clear this so we can better see the next two options. Those are the alignment. So we can pick if the image will be on the left or the right. And the item offset, which affects the same side that you align the image to. So with alignment to the right, you can create an offset on the right. And if my alignment is on the left, then the offset will work on the left side. 
and the offset option determines whether the item image will be stuck to the element side, which is the case when we set zero, so I have no offset here now, or if the image will be separated from the side by however many pixels you set. It's all down to preference. Okay, I'll clear this and return my image to the left. So this is my first item done, and as I worked on it, we covered all the item options. Now I'm going to make and customize more items to populate my showcase. Since that's going to take some time, I'll just skip ahead. Here we are, all my items are done, and we can see what my showcase looks like now. The overlay image is floating on top of everything and staying front and center even as I move through the item images. The items themselves also have an unfolding animation effect when they appear, but that's not as apparent given that I've been working on them all along. However, that will be better explained in the next section of the options. Before we get to that though, we have one more option left in our current section, the Enable Cursor Follow Image. By switching this to Yes, we get a new field where we can upload or select an icon-style image that will follow the cursor. Let me demonstrate. I'll select something from my media library, for example, this SVG icon. Okay, and now when I hover over the showcase, my cursor is accompanied by the SVG icon I selected. Alright, I don't plan on using this for my design, so I'll disable the cursor follow image option. Okay, now we can move on to the next section, the appear animation. This is where we can set what kind of appearance effect we want for our items. The default setting is from bottom and I'll circle back to it once we've seen the others. So there's from center, which looks like this, and there's none, where the animation is disabled so the items don't have an appear effect. They are all already displayed in the showcase. Okay, and if we go back to the from bottom, this is what it looks like. For my design, I'll use the from center set. Perfect. After that, we have the developer tools. This is an option you get with all of our widgets. If you switch it to yes, it will display the widget in the form of a WordPress shortcode, this light grey text, which you can easily copy for use elsewhere on your site. Alright, I'll switch this back. And under that, we have the help section. It contains links to various helpful resources, including a link to our help center, in case you need them. And that's all for the content tab. Let's take a look at the style tab now. I mean, we did look at it earlier, but that was for the eventuality that you would be using a text overlay. Now we'll consider the relevant options for using an image overlay. We covered most of these already, but what's left is the padding. Since my image is wider than my example text was, moving the slider now will eventually push the image inward to make more space at its sides. By the way, if the padding set by the slider isn't enough for your needs, you can always input a different value manually. However, I'll clear this as I don't need any extra padding. Okay, moving on to the item style section. We actually covered most of these options as well. Still, there's the hover background color. With this option, we can change the color of the overlay that appears on the item images when we hover over them. I'm going to replace this default light grey with the black color, but I'll also give it a degree of transparency. Okay, now when I hover it, the item images get a bit shaded. It's subtle but keeps them better visible than the default grey overlay. So that was the hover background color, and given that we also covered the spacing item style options, that means we're done. I'll hit update to save my work. And this is the finished design of my floating item showcase. There is an overlay image, and as I scroll, we can see how the item images unfold to take their place in the showcase thanks to the animation effect on them. It all looks good, the scroll moves smoothly, and this is the design I was going for. Speaking of design, I mirrored the one I found on the widgets page, which belongs to the key theme. If we examine the page again, there it is. So hopefully this floating item showcase breakdown has helped you to see how easy this widget is to use and customize. If you have any questions after watching this video, or comments or suggestions you'd like to make, please drop us a line in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and theme guides. Thank you for watching!